Hello everyone, my name is Mikael Säker. I work with the default team as a developer and designer and technical writer. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the default editor uh, and look at a small example project that we put together for you. Uh, I assume that uh, everyone who follows this has been able to download or first of all sign up for default and also download the editor. Uh, otherwise you can just go to our homepage www.default.com and uh, you will find good instructions on how to how to proceed. Right, uh, so this is what you are met uh, by when you start up the editor for the first, or not for the first time, the first time you will get a login actually uh, and the welcome screen, but uh, subsequent times you, this is what it will look like. Uh, and it doesn't look like much at this moment and that is because I, I don't have a project open. So let's start by opening up a project. Uh, I have this uh, project prepared. I also have a branch ready. If I don't uh, want uh, or don't have a branch here, I have to click new branch and create a new branch and name it to something. Uh, a branch is really just a a local copy of the whole game project so and I can have one or many of those branches and, and uh, I do work on, on my local copy and then uh, once in a while I can synchronize against the service to, to uh, get up to speed with both get other people up to sp in my team up to speed with with my work and also to download stuff from that they have uh, synced up to the servers. Since I already have a, a branch here, I will open that one. Let's see here. Let go full screen and just rearrange my screens like that. Right, so this is the editor. On the left hand side here, we have the project explorer. It's a file explorer that shows all the content of, of my project, all the files that, that are included here. Uh, in the center, we have the big editor area. Uh, depending on what I have open here, I will also get an outline of, of uh, what the content of, of that editor here. Uh, we will see examples of that later. And if I select stuff in the editor, I will also get access to various properties down here. The change files view here uh, shows uh, all th the things I, the, I've changed in the product. If I, for example, open a file and, and just uh, do some edit here, it will immediately show up here. I can also go back and revert changes here if I want to. Um, and in the cent down center I have the console where uh, I get log messages and stuff when I run the when I run my games. I will also get the, like errors and stuff. There's also a curve editor that is used in the particle editor that we'll see later on. Right, so this project is really simple at the moment. It consists of uh, a main collection. A main collection is, is uh, what is loaded into the editor when you start up the first time. Uh, and you, everything you put in the main collection will be shown on screen. If we open this one up, I uh, will see uh, that it contains another collection that is called Ground. And the ground here it uh, contains a number of, of objects here. Let's uh, look a little bit closer at what that those things are, because each and every one of these little ground pieces here in the ground collection is actually a game object. And the game object is a central uh, thing in default. Uh, everything that you want to show on the screen or that needs some kind of behavior that plays sound or whatever uh, uh, has to be game object and all game objects are identified by a name like ground zero ground one two three four five six and so on inside a game object a game object has a location and uh, if I create a new game object here for example I can just make an empty one here that could be go I can move that around here it doesn't have it doesn't look like anything right now because it doesn't contain any, any graphics so, so it's, this is just an empty position really but it's still a game object uh, but I can fill that thing 
with various that this game would do with various uh, components and a, a common component is the sprite component like all of these has one sprite component each and the sprite component is just a, a graphics a piece of graphics that that is displayed uh, it could also be a, an animation a flipbook animation or a, a spine animation or something like that so you can have animated uh, pieces as well right uh, if I uh, to, to get to get sprites into the game, uh, we need to import images. We have created an image folder here and added two pieces of two PNGs. I can open them up so you can see here this one of them, for example. It's just regular images. I just drop them into into this folder and then I add them to what is called an atlas. An atlas is just a way of, of collecting many images into a larger image. We do that for performance reasons. Uh, and everything I, I add to this atlas is then accessible uh, in sprites. So I can, like one, this sprite for example here, Ground Zero has image, this level that we saw just now, and also a default animation that is Ground 1. I can change it to Ground 2 here and you see that the image, it selects the other Ground variant there. Uh, so all of these are uh, are game objects with sprites inside that, and they are lined up. The idea here is to, to create this. This is supposed to be the ground in the game, and what, what we want to do is we want to uh, scroll this so we get get a sense of movement. And one way of doing that is is to just move them to the left. A little bit, and when when the this guy just disappears off screen, which is this this edge here, I will reset this position up here, and then move along, and they will just rotate back and forth or go around and around like in a Ferris wheel or whatever. And the way I do that is I I create a game object, and in that game object I put a script component, and the script component is a piece of Lua code that includes some kind of behavior that I want to create and in this case we just we, we set the, we start by in the init function uh, which is called when the game object is loaded into the game um, we set the speed for for the ground and then we have an update function and this update function is called once every frame um, and this happens for this controller game of it only so so all these guys they don't have a script they, they, they are just regular sprites right now and in that update loop we go through all these pieces that we have we have uh, named up here just for conven convenience so we loop through this list of of, of uh, ground pieces the ideas of, of these game objects and we set get their position and offset them a bit and if they are off screen, we reset them to to the right hand side of the of the screen again, and just move them by by uh, the defined speed here. If you run this, uh, it will look like this. It's not very exciting right now, but it works. It's pretty smooth and, and looks like like a good start. <laughs> 